We can worship according to Yahweh's word, or we can worship according to man's tradition. Emperor Constantine, a sun worshiper, solidified the change from Sabbath to Sunday. In the first 300 years of the New Testament, the church made hundreds of changes in doctrine. It's time that we follow scripture and not the traditions of man. I'd like to welcome you to Shattered Traditions here in the Holy Land, a very special program. We are at Tel Megiddo today, also known as uh, Armageddon. This is where the uh, battle will happen. Uh, we will talk about that later in the program. I want to introduce uh, Alan. Uh, good to have you with, with uh, us today and be part of the program. It's good to be here. I want to share some of the history, and then we'll get into the Bible and really uh, focus on what this site really is. And So uh, here's some information about this site. Uh, Megiddo is located in a strategic uh, location. It was a uh, trade route that connects uh, Egypt with Mesopotamia and also Asia Minor. It's actually known as the uh, Vera Maris, uh, Latin for Way of the Sea. So it's a very important site from that standpoint. Uh, Megiddo has been inhabited uh, since the early Bronze Age, uh, between 3500 and 3100 BCE. Uh, reached its uh, peak in the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, the city, and this is really fascinating, had about 25 to 30, some say 26, uh, but anywhere between there, 25 different civilizations and by the way the word tell is a, is a mound is an artificial mound and is created typically through that a method different civilizations so uh, near the Jezreel Valley which we can actually see in the distance uh, as we'll talk about this is where the armies of the earth will uh, gather a very important place known as Armageddon um, remains in the ancient uh, city as far as the archaeological evidence here there's an old Canaanite uh, temple uh, remains and an altar here so it dates about 5,000 years we see uh, gates from both the Canaanites and the uh, Israelite periods. Uh, stables uh, here uh, built by uh, King Solomon. Uh, Jeroboam II built some uh, silos, grain silos, which is really fascinating. And uh, really one of maybe the most important uh, or most uh, fascinating for me is these uh, water ground uh, system, uh, water system built by uh, King Ahab. But, you know, more than anything else, uh, this site, it's the uh, prophetic uh, significance that we find here. Uh, mm -hmm. Armageddon, again, you know, so, so you tell Megiddo, Megiddo, uh, uh, the uh, Jezreel Valley as we have, but most people think of Armageddon, and uh, that comes from Revelation uh, 16. So why don't you, uh, I know you have that ready, so why don't you read that for us, Alan, and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about what we find there. Okay, in Revelation 16 and verse 12, we read, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And then we read in verse 14, and they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of Elohim Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief, Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together unto a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Har Megiddo, Har Megiddon is where they get the, the term. And, uh, Har meaning mountain or, or tell in this case. And, right. and there's a difference uh, for, for those watching. A, a mountain is where a mountain is something not uh, artificial. Uh, a tell is artificially made through again conquering uh, civilizations and, and again this is like 26 civilizations as one here. built upon the other upon the other yeah. it kept going higher as we were walking up here i was thinking this is all man-made this <laughs> Isn't is a amazing? mountain of stone and it's all man-made yeah it's, it's way up or I mean, in the history here too you know i'm sure we'll have footage of the uh, the altar this 5000 year old canaanite altar and right remains so there's a vast history here but you know what i find interesting or several things real fascinating about this passage but uh one of the first things is it says the river euphrates is is going to dry up that's what what starts this plague why exactly. do you suppose that is I, I i have my theories but well i have a theory too and i've i just recently thought about this when i did some research and uh you know, uh, our, our president likes to call ISIS ISIL, mm -hmm. the Islamic uh, state in Levant. Mm -hmm. Levant is the, the nations along the eastern Mediterranean. Basically like Syria and Iraq. Turkey and, all yeah, the way down yeah. to, to uh, uh, Egypt. And so uh, Levant actually means rising, like in the eastern Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. 
which could refer to the sun rising. We've always thought, well, maybe he's talking about the Oriental countries, you know, Japan, the land of the sun rising, mm -hmm. but the, the sun, this is, this is their symbol. But I got to thinking, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to, if maybe, maybe we're talking about this area because the Euphrates goes all the way from southern Iraq, you know, through Babylon, mm -hmm. sure. up, through Syria, up way up into Turkey. Yeah. If you dry that whole area up, you prepare a way for the kings to come down this way, and who knows where they're coming from? It could be sure. a lot of Middle Eastern yeah. kings, uh, and also says that, that the way might be prepared, and that word means provided. Yeah. And what if it could mean the armies provided with their materiel to, to take on a battle? I mean, it's just a thought, but yeah. you know, we've always, you got to kind of sometimes think outside well, the absolutely. box. Absolutely, you know, I think a, it's important to look at all views, and right. you know, the traditional view is that, you know says it kings from the east, and mm -hmm. the most, and actually it means sun rising. If you look at the Strongs, and mm -hmm. most will uh, say that this is referring to the Orient, Oriental yeah. nations, and and it, it could be. You know, we we don't know. It's interesting uh, what you said about uh, ISIS, and uh, certainly we think uh, here at Yahweh's Restoration Ministry and Shattering Traditions that. Uh, Islam is going to play a very important role in end-time prophecy and certainly might fit. But the, the point is, the important point is that this provides a way for these nations, whether it's ISIS, whether it's Orient. We know the scripture says all the nations of the earth. Right. So, so, so in the end, it's going to be all the nations. And I think no matter if it's ISIL or no matter if it's uh, the Orient or whoever, that the point is, I believe, that, that this provides a way for them to come to exactly. uh, Israel. Well, you think about it, the Euphrates River is one of the great river systems of the world. It goes 1,700 miles. That's amazing. It is. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, that's, I mean it's, 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 getting, it's getting in the same category as, say, the Missouri, where we yeah. are. I mean, it's a, it's a long mile, a long way from top to bottom. And if you dry all that up, there's, yeah, a, yeah. there's a natural passageway coming in this way. In fact, Alexander the Great said there's no better staging area for war Mm -hmm. Then this area right here, yeah, it's, it's perfect, going right down toward Jerusalem. They can gather here, get all mm -hmm. the armies together, and when they're ready... They're going to march. You now, we'll, we'll re re read about that in, in right. Zechariah. Now, it also says here, which I think, again, is very important from a, a biblical standpoint. It says, I'll read it one more time. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out from the mouth of the dragon, which represents who? Satan the devil. Satan the devil. Right? Satan the devil and out of the mouth of the beast and the mouth of the false prophet. So we find here Satan, we find here the Antimacite, we find here the false prophet. And these unclean spirits are sent to the kings of the earth. So we yes. find here essentially that these unclean spirits are going to uh, motivate or, or uh, uh, possess, if you will, uh, these uh, kings to all come and gather. And you know, you don't, I don't hear that mentioned by, by many ministers, especially those who study eschatology, the, this concept that these uh, kings are possessed, really. If you think about it, these unclean spirits go forth and they, they, they possess or, or motivate Definitely. or influence, you know, whatever word you want to use, these kings to then come and meet here sure. for the final battle. So I think that's very important that the, uh, again, Satan the devil, uh, the, the end of Messiah, uh, say, some say the Antichrist, uh, the man of sin, along with the false prophet will come and will send the armies of the earth to gather here to Armageddon. And again, you know, we, we, you talked about this. They're, this is where they're going to gather. This is it's called the Jezreel Valley. It's, it's just a, a, a huge, a yes, huge area. And uh, several uh, people, notable people, have said it, there's no better place. Yeah. And, and you know, really, um, history and, as more importantly, prophecy always centers on the Middle East, especially the nations that come in contact with Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Always through the scriptures. If you're going to believe the scriptures is going to be the end time scenario, you have to believe it's going to be centered right here. Yeah, and that's a very important point. I don't want to get into the connection with the Roman church and all, but you know, so many people, they're focused on Europe. They're focused on, you know, north of here and, and not on the Holy Land. And yet, as you pointed out, and I think it's a very, very important point, prophecy is centered on Israel mm -hmm. and or in the Middle East specifically. Well, Right. Well, even right now, you know, with the, uh, it looks like the imminent defeat of ISIS, uh, who wanted to establish a caliphate, basically, the leader of, but he was so radical that a lot of Muslims wouldn't accept that. But now the nation of Turkey, with their yeah, leader, yeah. he has said that he wants to establish a caliphate. They have the, they have the resources, the wherewithal, and the military to, to actually carry something like that out, the organization, yeah, if you yeah. will. And you know what's amazing is I can see that really being the fulfillment of 
of prophecy. And again, we're not going to get into it this program. We will, though, it, within this trip, mm -hmm. the uh, identi identity of, of what we believe the uh, seven kings or kingdoms as we find in Revelation 17. I think we're going to take a short break because when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Zechariah. Because Zechariah has a lot to say about this uh, prophecy and, and Armageddon. Because really Armageddon is also called the day of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Because this is a day that Yahshua is going to return, Yahshua being the Messiah. And uh, he is going to uh, conquer the wicked and uh, restore peace and righteousness eventually to this earth. So uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to focus on the prophecy of Zechariah as we find in uh, chapter 12 and maybe in 14 if we have time. Okay. Uh, don't go anywhere. Again, we're going to come back. We're going to focus on the pro uh, Zechari uh, Zechariah's prophecy. And it's going to be fascinating. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Coming up. This, this is a Jewish people. Yeah. And they're going to well, they're going to watch as Joshua descends from the heavens. But We're from here, about 200 million men, yeah, army. I mean, that that's just it's <laughs> got to be all the nations, and that's huge. We now offer a beautiful, all-inclusive, one-of-a-kind Bible based off the King James version that incorporates Strong's numbering in the running text and Greek and Hebrew dictionaries. Forget having to carry a huge, bulky concordance with you. The Restoration Study Bible has these dictionaries in the back for quick and easy reference. This intuitive Bible also has invaluable notes all through its over 2,000 pages. Character profiles, book introductions, and charts are just some of the informative features that make the RSB not just a great study Bible, but a Bible geared towards the original Hebraic perspective of the people and times in which it was written. Not too many Bibles do that. Every time you read the RSB, a new world and paradigm will emerge challenging traditions and misconceptions. To receive your copy in one of the three beautiful cover choices, the classic designer premium, simply call us at 573-896-1000 or go online at store.yrm.org. Be the first in your congregation to have this beautiful, one-of-a-kind study Bible. Since antiquity, the truth regarding the real Messiah has been hidden in plain sight. From misconceptions regarding his appearance to the name he was known and called by, popular beliefs about the greatest figure in human history hold many inaccuracies. Was he born on the solstice date of December 25th? Or does the Bible indicate his birth around the prophetic fall feasts? Did he abolish biblical law? Did he keep the Sabbath? And did he usher in an entirely new faith? Find out why the most revered figure in history has so many misconceptions in our fascinating free booklet, The True Messiah. In this booklet, we deconstruct centuries of ancient Greek and Roman influence to see the Messiah from a fresh perspective, built around his Hebraic upbringing and culture. To understand the true Messiah is to unlock the purpose of our Savior's dramatic soon return. To receive your free copy, dial 1-573-896-1000. Want to read it right now? Go to our website, yrm.org. Did you know that the word rapture is absent from the Bible? Matter of fact, the notion of a pre-tribulation rapture was first proposed by a man named John Nelson Darby in the 1930s. It was later popularized by the Schofield Reference Bible at the beginning of the 20th century. Instead of a secret rapture, the Messiah prophesied that all eyes would see His coming. Even though Scripture doesn't promise a secret rapture to heaven, it does nonetheless promise protection on the earth during the Great Tribulation. This has been today's fascinating fact. Do you desire to better understand your Bible? If so, then you need the Restoration Times magazine. This insightful bi-monthly publication includes in-depth articles on proper living, prophetic trends, and biblical truth. It reveals how to have a real relationship with your Creator, what we must do to be saved, the meaning of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and much more. Only in the RT Magazine will you get absolute clarity in Bible understanding, including how popular doctrine developed and why. You can read the Restoration Times Magazine online at restorationtimes.org. Also, for those who give a gift of $25 or more, will receive a hard copy of this amazing resource. Don't delay. Open your mind to truth like never before by going online or giving to this important work. You can donate online at donate.yrm.org or by calling 1-573-896-1000 Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 Central. I'd like to welcome you back. Again, we're at Tel Megiddo. And by the way, you may hear a little bit of wind 
in the background is this is, again, we're up pretty high. This is 26, uh, 25, uh, depending on who you ask, civilizations. So this is a tell, and by the way, a tell in Hebrew refers to an artificial male. Now, if you were with us for the first segment, we talked about Harmageddon or uh, the mountain of uh, Megiddo. Uh, really, again, better is a tell Megiddo and uh, the Jezreel Valley and what's going to happen. We want to focus now on the prophecy we find in Zechariah. Zechariah has a lot to say about the day of Yahshua's return and, and really, again, Armageddon. So, Alan, if you would, why don't you set the stage for us and uh, read uh, Zechariah 12 and, and I think 1 through uh, 9, I think it is. Okay. The burden of the word of Yahweh for Israel, saith Yahweh, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and form the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling, and all of the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. In that day, says Yahweh, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength of Yahweh of hosts in their Elohim. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an earth of, of fire upon the wood and like a torch of fire in the sheaf. And they shall devour all the people round about and on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. What an amazing prophecy. And just again to set the stage for those who, who missed maybe a few minutes of the first segment, we're at Tel Megiddo. This is the Jezreel Valley. Uh, we know the, all the armies of the earth, it says her, they will meet here in this valley, and this uh, valley is as vast, it's a vast valley and certainly uh, capable of holding that uh, size of a uh, force and army. But We're from talking here, about 200 million men, yeah. army. I mean, that, that's just... <laughs> that's got to be all the nations, I mean, that's huge. What does the United States have, I think, what is it, around three or four yeah, million army? I don't know what army? the current uh, total is, but, but from here, it's important though to note, because many people have this uh, understanding that the battle will happen here. Mm -hmm. They're going to meet here, but then scripture says, as we find here in Zechariah, that they're going to then march onto Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason this passage is so important, because mm -hmm. it shows where the people will, will come from. They're going to come from Tel Megiddo, as we find in Revelation 16. Then as we find in Zechari uh, Zechariah 12, they're going to march onto uh, Jerusalem. And uh, I mean, describe what you, what, what you read there and, and uh, who, who's going to come back, if you will, and, and, and what's going to happen. Well, he says, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is bitterness for in bitterness for now, his firstborn. I, I want to I want to come back to that verse. So I want to really focus on the first nine, just mm -hmm. for a moment, because I, I think it's so important that we do this. Uh, number one, we, we find that Yahshua the Messiah. I mean, it says that Yahweh is going to come back. We know that's representative of the Son, mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah is going to come back to this earth. He's literally it says he's going to fight against all that come against Jerusalem. Every army that comes against Jerusalem, he is going to fight against. And you know, one of the things well, I really... Well, verse 3, he says he'll make it a burdensome stone. Yeah, exactly. So they're going to wish they hadn't done what they did. <laughs> exactly. Uh, because he's going to fight their battles, as he did in the Old Testament, too. And not only will he, will he fight the battles, and, and I agree, I mean, I think it's so important to show Yahshua's involvement there and, 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 and the love and the compassion that he's going to show to his people, 
but he's also going to strengthen his people. Mm -hmm. You know, it talks about how the governor is going to be like the earth to, to the fire and basically, you know, just consumes a wood. Same thing. You know, Yahweh is going to empower his people so that yes. they can defend. And even the most, what does it say, the most weak, it's going to be like David. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I believe that's what it says. The most weak is going to be like, I mean, think about that. I mean, David was a great, great warrior yes. within Israel. And, and even the weak of Israel, Scripture says, they're going to be like David mm -hmm. at this time. So, you know, I, I find it just inspiring to know that Yahshua is going to come back. He's going to fight against the armies. But not only that, he's going to strengthen his people mm -hmm. so that they too can defend themselves. And, and even it says the most weak again will be like David, which was... You know, a, a great warrior, mm -hmm. and, uh, so important. Exactly. I, any other thoughts on, a, on verses 1 through 9 and, and what we find there? Or? Well, it, it's just the fact that uh, the whole world is going to be against Jerusalem. Um, that has to be driven by Satan himself. Mm -hmm. well, Why would all these nations, uh, you know, come against this city? Yeah. It's almost going to be destroyed yeah. until yeah. Yahweh step, or Yahshua, Yahshua steps in. Yeah and destroys these armies yeah, with, yeah. The, with his coming. And uh, why would they all turn on Jerusalem, I guess, is the, is the big question. Well, again, you got to go back to the Bible and got to go back to prophecy. And what does uh, Revelation 16, I believe, is verse 12, maybe 13 say? It says there that, that the, the, uh, the um, dragon, which represents Satan the devil, mm -hmm. the uh, beast, which represents the man of sin, and the false prophet, they're going to send forth unclean spirits into these mm -hmm. kings of the earth. They're going to influence these kings or then come here so you know in some ways they're, they're coming against their own uh will and in, in, in some cases because of that influence well, uh, you see, demonic power uh, this is his satan's last ditch efforts because he knows this is his last chance yeah. he knows yashua's about to come back yeah. he's going to do everything he can to, to to blunt that coming and try to destroy uh whatever's left of the what he prizes as his future kingdom, yeah, uh, yeah. A center of government here. Now, now you also read verse 10, and, and, and I think verse 10 is, more, is extremely important. Matter of fact, I, for me, it's one of the most important prophecies we find in the Word. And I'll explain mm -hmm. why. It talks about how they're going to look on the person they perished, where they, they put to death, mm -hmm. and they're going to mourn as one mourns for their only son. Right. I mean, that's staggering. Think about that. These, this is a Jewish people. Yeah. And they're going, to, well, they're going to watch as Yahshua descends from the heavens, and they're going to realize that, hey, you know, this is a guy that we put to death. Mm -hmm. And they're going to realize this for the first time, I believe. And they're going to bless it as he who comes in the name of Yahweh, as we find within, within the, uh, the evangels. Mm -hmm. It's going to fulfill, I think, Yahshua's words there. Well, as we hear here, while we're here in, in Israel, you know, they're still looking for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. They're still looking for this Savior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's going to be here, and they're going to realize, ultimately, he is the Messiah. Yeah, look look yeah. at what he's done. Look, uh, you know, how he's taking control of this earth. He is the Messiah. And they're going to realize that these, this is the one we killed. Yeah. And, and for me, you know, I, I think for that reason, this is one of the greatest messianic prophecies we find within the word. Mm -hmm. You know, as we, we, we know from places like Ezekiel that it says he's going to bring uh, the, the, the sticks together again, the Ephraim and, and mm -hmm. uh, Judah, and, and how they're going to be one stick yes. uh, once more. And, but it really starts uh, during this time. It starts when the armies again will meet here in the Jezreel Valley, will then march uh, onto Jerusalem to uh, wipe out Israel as a nation. And, and isn't it amazing the, the anti-Semitism we see in the world today? And, and even now, I, I think there's this, this desire to remove Israel. And of course, I, I think we're not gonna get into it, but Psalms 83 speaks about that as well. The, uh, ten nations forming a confederacy to destroy Israel, which I think fits right into uh, what we're seeing with Islam and, and uh, Middle Eastern uh, prophecy today. But mm -hmm. it really is an amazing thing to think that when Yahshua does come back, that the Jews of today, they're going to realize that he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He was Yahweh's son. They, they put him to death. And, you know, this, this, this verbiage of mourn as, as they would for their only son. I mean, you know, I have kids. Uh, of course, you have children. And, and, um, and uh, to, to think of the loss of, of a son or a daughter is just, you know, it's just almost, almost hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, yeah. and, and that's the type of remorse. That's the kind of remorse uh, Israel's going to have. Mm -hmm. But there are good times coming because once he sets up his millennial kingdom here, when he goes to, uh, to Zion, sends up his, his throne at Jerusalem, uh, then the whole earth is going to be changed. 
we won't have all of these problems, trials, difficulties, wars, all of that is, uh, is going to be under Yahshua's control. Yeah. You have nothing to worry about after yeah. that. I mean, you know. Uh, well, that is true. And, you know, Scripture says when you see him coming, your, your, your redemption draws nigh. Yes. And it is true. You know, when Yahshua comes, uh, the, his, you know, our redemption is, is here. And not only for us believers and, and Yahweh and Yahshua and, and, and uh, the remnant, if you will, I believe, but also for the Jewish people. And uh, Yahweh's never forgotten about the Jewish people. And that's one reason I, I believe personally that we need to support the Jewish people, uh, even today. You know, I know they're not perfect. I know we, we see things in Israel that, that should not be. But Yahweh still has love for his people. Mm -hmm. And I think Zechariah 12, verse 10, if, if there's not, if, uh, you know, I, I think it really uh, shows uh, the, the, the depth of that love he has. Um, well, yeah, and, uh, you know, if, if this is the place that Yahshua has chosen, you know, set down on the Mount of Olives at that time, once he yeah. destroys all of these armies, and he puts his government down here in, at Jerusalem, uh, then comes the healing process for the, you know, the whole of history. Yeah. Uh, the animosity with Jews and, and their brothers, the Muslims, and, and everybody else, you know, all of that will be, will be gone, will be passed. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, so anyway, we, we have a hope, even though yeah. it's going to be a devastating thing. It won't be, you know, the tribulation will be not, like nothing we've ever yeah. seen. We're sort of like the call we'll before see. the storm. And, yeah. you know, we'll go through the storm and, and uh, you know, but there's going to be, in this case, a calm afterwards and, and, and a peace and, and just a, a wonderful time. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with it, the Bible calls this uh, the millennium. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Bible doesn't say millennium per se, but it's a thousand years. And that's the meaning of millennium. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see Yahshua reign and rule on this earth, by the way. You know, some say it's going to be in heaven. That's, that's not the case. But uh, anyway, so uh, again, I'd like to thank you for being part of this very special program here at Atel Megiddo, a very special place. And I'd like to thank you for watching and being part of this and, and pray that this has been a blessing for you. And uh, I hope you'd experience uh, some of this through us and also maybe some of the footage you'll see throughout this program. It's been a blessing to be here. And again, I pray this has been, been a blessing for you. Until next time, may Yahweh bless. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Shattering Traditions. This program is an outreach of Yahweh's Restoration Ministry. For all our materials, including free booklets and the RT Magazine, visit our website, yrm.org. Get your copy of the Restoration Study Bible, the book that's changing hearts and minds around the world. Visit store.yrm.org. Keep up to date with ministry news and events by liking us on our Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash YRM. Subscribe to our Shattering Traditions YouTube channel and see all our latest videos. This ministry is only possible by the tithes and offerings of our members and supporters. To donate by phone, call toll-free 1-844-899-6438 or online at donate.yrm.org. Until next week, remember to search the Bible, remove religious baggage, and join our mission to shatter tradition.